So our study was done with uh, the jewel wasps Nasonia vitropenis, which is a parasitoid wasp. And that means that they uh, inject venom into other organisms that changes the metabolism of that organism so that it becomes a good environment for their young to be raised in. Parasitoids are a vast group of insects. Uh, estimates of the number of species in the world range from 100,000 to up as high as 600,000. And they play a very important role in keeping other insect populations in check. You don't actually know the function of venom until it's injected into another organism and how it changes that organism. And so when we study wasp venom, we can see these very close-knit interactions of two different species and see how those interactions evolve over time. In the past, most people have attributed new gene functions to duplication and neofunctionalization. And that simply means that you have a gene and that gene has a function and then the gene duplicates and it changes into a new function. But the problem with that theory is that it's very slow. And then if we're looking at the time scale of what we see with these wasps' venoms, we're seeing that that has happening much, much, much faster. For example, two of the species that we looked at are relatively closely related, so they separated from each other only about one million years ago, and 40% of their venom repertoire has changed in just that relatively short period of time. And when we saw that, we realized that it couldn't possibly be described by duplication and neofunctionalization. Primarily what happens is a non-venom single copy gene gets recruited and evolves a new function. It's sort of like it's taking on a new job. It's like they're moonlighting. They have a day job and now they've got a night job. And the night job is being a venom. And then the question is what then happens next? Maybe the night job's more lucrative and the gene evolves to become a venom specialist. Some of these genes actually maintain both functions. And then we even found that in some cases when a venom gene stopped being a venom gene, it appears to be going back to its day job. This co-option method, because it's exploiting an existing gene, can in principle happen more quickly. And therefore, we think that this may be a common process when organisms are subject to strong selection in a changing environment. Venom research has important implications in medical research because venom is basically composed of metabolically active compounds. So these are things that will go into another organism and change a gene or a metabolite. And venom in the past has actually been developed into new pharmaceuticals and drugs. It's a vast potential resource for new drug discovery, which is basically has not been explored at all. So I think going forward, that's probably the largest implication of venoms and parasitoids to medicine.